Good morning. Um, I'm posting a little differently today. Um, my computer just has a big spinning wheel on it. Um, well, I should say the software I use to stream normally is not starting, has error messages. So my uh, Bible study today will be live. If you've been following me in Matthew, um, welcome. And if you uh, are just looking because it's a live video, uh, you are more than welcome to stay for a Bible study. Um, I'm in uh, Matthew 12 today. So uh, let's go ahead and pray and we'll get into the scripture. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we need you. We need your word. We love you and we depend on you every day. Thank you. Thank you for being with us and meeting us as we encounter your word. Please make us humble. Please keep us contrite and take your word seriously. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so Matthew um, chapter 12, we're going to read verses 1 through 21. I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see the Bible here. Okay, I'm sorry if I don't keep it totally lined up. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look at your disciples. Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him? how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He went on from there and entered their synagogue. And a man was there with a withered hand. And they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So that they might accuse him. He said to them, Which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out and it was restored, healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there and many followed him and he healed them all and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not quench until he brings justice to victory. And in his name, the Gentiles will hope. Okay, let's observe first. This is what we do. We read God's word and we see what we can see. We wait for him to reveal and we observe. So, first we see that Jesus leads his disciples through a grain field. His disciples are hungry and pluck heads of grain to eat. The Pharisees accuse them of breaking Sabbath law. Jesus cites scripture to defend them. Jesus quotes Hosea 6.6 6 again, which he did earlier, and says that he is Lord of the Sabbath. The Pharisees try to entrap Jesus over the issue of healing on the Sabbath. And Jesus says, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath, and he heals the man's hand. 
The Pharisees conspire over how to destroy him. Jesus perceives this, withdraws, and heals all the people who follow him. Matthew quotes Isaiah, citing it as prophecy of Christ. This is a really cool passage. Um, what can we take away from this? Okay, so the first thing we see immediately that stands out to me is that his disciples are hungry, right? Um, and that to me, they're not living a life of plenty. They're literally so hungry that on their way to somewhere else, they're p plucking heads of grain to eat. Um, I suppose it's possible. It could just mean, oh, they're kind of feeling like, oh, I need a little snack, right, on the way. But I think, I mean, they know the laws of the Sabbath. So I think they're hungry enough to actually need, feel compelled to break Sabbath law by eating. And the reason this is a problem is because the, the act of plucking the grains could have been construed as harvesting, which would have been work. I think that's what's going on here. Um, also, it must not have been against the law for people to pluck grains from someone else's field to, to eat. Otherwise, I think the Pharisees would have also accused them of that. Um, but the interesting thing is Jesus intentionally leads them through the field. He, I think he knew they were hungry, and he leads them to a place where they can find a little sustenance. So they're following him, and he leads them through the field. And the Pharisees here, it's like they have no other reason in life than to try to entrap Jesus. And they're, so they're literally following him around and his disciples around. They must be in the group of disciples. So not everyone in the group is a disciple, right? Some of them are there specifically to try to entrap Jesus. They're following him this whole time. They have to be because they see this. I doubt the Pharisees just hang out in the fields on Sabbath. Does that make sense? So they're actually in the crowds following him everywhere, devoting, devoting their lives to undermining him and trying to, to, um, to trap him in some wrong that he's doing. And so they accuse him and his disciples. Um, and... And, and, they, and they bring up scripture. Have, um, it's not lawful to do this on the Sabbath. He says, well, if we're appealing to scripture, then let's look at more scripture and see what really happens on the Sabbath. Remember how David did this? Remember how the priests can do this on the Sabbath? So he's appealing to, to scripture in its total. But then he says, I, um, if you had known what this means... I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. And then he says this, for the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, we've been seeing his authority throughout. Throughout Matthew, Jesus's authority. And here he's, he's appealing to his own authority again. I am Lord of the Sabbath, he says. Um, so he goes on from there into the synagogue. Um, Jesus, I think, must have known this withered, the man with the withered hand was going to be in the synagogue. So again, he's leading himself and his disciples into a situation where this issue is going to come up. And um, the Pharisees follow him in there, and they actually bring up, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? They see the man with the withered hand. They say, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Now, why would they have been bringing this up? Okay, obviously they're trying to entrap him over the Sabbath. Why else? They know he can heal. They actually are confident in the fact that he will heal. Think about that. They know his power they know he will show mercy, and they are trying to use his mercy and power against him. This is how lost they are. And I think this is what Christ was talking about when he thanked the Lord of heaven and earth 
that he had hidden these things from the wise and understanding. The Pharisees are supposed to be wise and understanding. They are actually seeing real miracles and they know they, they can actually, they're actually trusting Jesus that he will work a miracle. And they're saying, and that's how we're going to get him. We know Jesus will work a miracle. We know he can work a miracle. And then we'll get him. Then we'll get him. That is, that is awful. They are so deceived that they can know the truth and actively fight against it. And Jesus knows this. He knows he's being, he's, they're trying to trap him anyway. But we, remember, he's the one who chose to go to this synagogue. He must have known this man was there. He's addressing this issue head on. So he says, which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? He's calling them hypocrites. You're hypocrites. You would allow a man to save a sheep on the Sabbath but you won't allow someone to heal a man on the Sabbath? What is wrong with you? So I picture him, he says this to them. You're hypocrites. Men are more valuable than sheep. And he turns around and says, stretch out your hand. You, you expect me to heal and I will heal. And I will do it on the Sabbath. And he heals the man's hand and it was restored, healthy like the other. This is a big miracle. Healing a withered hand, this isn't healing from sickness. Like, this is actually a physical deformity. I'm talking, like, we're talking bones and muscle regenerated and made whole. It's incredible. And the Pharisees see this, and they, and they went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Again, this is, they see, they know. They know who he is. And they're conspiring to destroy him. They will not acknowledge his authority. They see it, but they will not acknowledge it. It has been hidden from them. They should know, but they don't. Jesus is aware of this. He's aware of their plot against him. It is not time for him to be taken into custody, to go through his trial and his ordeal. So he withdraws. And many followed him, and he healed them all. <laughs> so this is amazing. Um, I, I mean, it doesn't say any, another day has passed or anything like that. So I, I think this is still on the Sabbath. And so, so Jesus says, men are more valuable than sheep. I will heal this man. And they, and the Pharisees withdraw to conspire against him. And he says, you know what? All of you who, who follow me today, we're just doing healings today. Yeah, it's the Sabbath. I'm just doing healings today. I'm Lord of the Sabbath. Everyone who followed me, you're getting healed. All right? It's almost like he's rubbing it in to the Pharisees. I can heal on the Sabbath. And, um, and then Matthew quotes Isaiah, and he uh, quotes this section. Behold my servant whom, whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom I, my soul is well pleased. Right, that sounds like, that is what God said when Christ was baptized. Um, I will put my spirit upon him and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. What were the Pharisees doing? They were taking bruised reeds and breaking them. They were taking smoldering wicks, and they were quenching them. They were doing evil, they were actually doing evil on the Sabbath, trying to keep Christ from healing. Instead of honoring God and resting in him, 
and doing good if good must be done. They were doing evil on the Sabbath. But Christ is gentle, as he's told us. He is gentle and lowly in heart. And on the Sabbath, he chooses to do good. And a bruised reed he will not break. He will be tender with you. A smoldering wick he will not quench. He will not put out the light that is in you. You can trust him with what you are going through. In his name, the Gentiles. That's, me. That's most of us. In his name, the Gentiles will hope. We have hope. My, uh, my conclusion for today is this. Is that the sinful hearts of men often conspire against God to try to rob him of his authority. But, if, but authority is not up for grabs. Praise God. It is the Lord's. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, all things rest under your authority. We are under your authority. Whether we want to admit it or not, please help us to submit to your, your authority. To, to find our greatest delight in submission to you. That is what we were created for. God, please keep our hearts from trying to rob you of your authority, for trying to undermine your authority, to, for trying to take it for, for ourselves and for our own purposes. Please help us to trust you, to trust in your gentleness, to trust in your justice. We love you, God. We need you more than we can possibly comprehend. Please, please, please be with us today. Make your presence known in our lives. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Sorry for the odd format today. I'll try to get uh, things working again um, for tomorrow. I'll see you again soon.